that warm glass of horse milk out of the fridge because it's time for Lucky Time Explosion! Wow! Oh, pew, pew, pew. How does one milk a horse? Yeah, I oh. know. That's the secret. I have I... the answers carefully. Uh, yes. yes, very carefully. You yes. could get really kicked. Yeah, I know. Really I, easily. I, I, if anybody Welcome knows the, the tale of Mr. Hand, I'll just leave it at that. No, no Mr. Hands. No, there Mr. we go. Hand. Demonetized in, instantly. Welcome back to okay. a Lucky Time Explosion, everybody. It's Friday, and we have a special guest host today, Battles. Okay. Battles is an actress, SAG yes. actress, actor. Yes. Actor. Uh, yeah, what yes. is it? Is it? Everyone's an actor now, right? Yeah, I think we're just le leveling the playing field in terms of like gender at this point. Yeah, right, we're, we're right. all actors. We're all doing the thing. That's true. Yeah, you're all doing the same exact thing. So I met uh, I met you at Bree's show. Yes. Yeah, so you've been a fan of Breeze for a while. Oh my God. There She's is amazing. a giant uh, pink portrait of myself immediately upon entering my room. Uh, uh, so excellent. it just shows where my level of ego is at. But it is <laughs> it is very good and she is very talented. And yes. also just so fun. I got wasted with her on one of the uh, most recent uh, July 4th parties that we had before Ooh. she moved to Lisbon. And it was... So fun. <laughs> Excellent. So, well, you so need fun. a little ego on you to be an actor, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, at the very least, you need thick skin because you're going to get a lot of rejections. Yeah. So. Today we're on In the Actor's Studio with yeah. Battles. My favorite word is fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. is uncensored. You can yeah. you can uh, cuss as much as you want. Oh, you can I say will. whatever you want. It's true. It's true. We oh, don't, don't give me that amount here. of freedom. <laughs> oh, you get full freedom over I here. This is lucky myself. time. This is lucky time. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, today's episode, I want to talk a little bit with you about just like what it's like being an actor in New York. Right away, I see a, a parallel with artists. Sure. In that we have to be ready for a lot of rejection, like constant rejection early on. Yeah. And uh, I feel like actors maybe are more prepared for that. In some sense, or maybe not. Maybe they, they feel it just as bad. Yeah, I, I really think it depends on, upon the person. Like, I think there are people who can just, like, really bounce back from that that no. And I think there are people who really kind of, like, take it more to heart. And, uh, you know, it, it takes them a little bit longer to, like, bounce back and recover. Mm. Um, I think, too, like, if you're just starting off in the business or if you're so close to that dream role and it just mm. gets yanked away, those are those are harder to kind of, like, <laughs> mitigate with your soul. Um but no, yeah, uh, I think there are a lot of a lot of parallels to be drawn. The one thing I can think of straight away is like, you know, artists need to find their medium, right? right. Whether, you know, you you paint or you're a sculptor, or like what what really kind of feeds your soul. I think actors are the same way, and I think there's that kind of like fine line between finding like the stuff that you want to do and what you're feasibly castable in. What would a medium be for an actor? Like improv versus drama, or live theater versus. TV is that kind of the vibe? Yeah, uh, you, yeah. Uh, you know, you can do mainly commercials, or like be kind of like a working actor in that sense. Or yeah, mm. you could be drawn to like more live theater. Improv is definitely a thing uh, within the realm of you know film. There's a you million genres. This is what you want to do. It's so funny. I was uh, very uncultured as a kid. I, I grew up in rural West Virginia, so there wasn't a lot of like arts to be found. And my parents were just like, really. You know, so just, TV wasn't a big thing. I mean, yeah. I mean, I like cartoons. Like, you know, that was kind of like my foray into like entertainment. Um, and like, you know, Saved by the Bell because I'm of a certain age. Oh, yeah. Great yeah, yeah. show. Yeah. It's <laughs> Kelly so Kapowski, underrated. baby. <laughs> I don't think Saved by the Bell is underrated. No, <laughs> Come no, on. Okay. Let's not get too crazy here. <laughs> It was a hit. It was a hit. Uh, it was I mean, it hit. was it was a product of its time. I think we can oh, all just sure. kind of Listen, like... Listen, if there agree. was no Saved by the Bell, there would be no 90210, and, and then that's, that's the true. other greatest show. And then let, let us not forget Mel Rose Mel, Place. Mel Rose Place, yes. Mel oh Rose Place. And yeah. Degrassi for our Canadian friends. That's true, <laughs> yes. yeah. Degrassi, which we launched get into the Drake. The the Drake. Which is not very popular. And right? the, the no. Ryan Reynolds as well. No? That's true. Oh, is, is he, he on that? I, I he was like think a teacher? So. Really? I, I think he was a kid. Well, Drake, kid? you know, oh the thing God. is, he he's a big better. He bets on huge right. sports events and he usually loses. So now <laughs> when Let's he bets. Let's bet on Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> oh, no, he bets. Well, I, I, I do bet on Kendrick Lamar Same. over Drake, personally. But Same. yeah, he it's called the Drake curse. If, if you find out that he, like, put money down on that person or team, whatever, you know you got to go reverse. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, he doubled down on that beef with Kendrick, and why? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why, bro? Well, he got crushed. Bad. Yeah. He's messing with the wrong guy. True that. 
So tell me a little bit about your journey to acting. What has your experience been like in New York? When did you come here to start this? Right, right. Oh, to you know? answer your initial question, because yeah. I saw something shiny. Um, <laughs> I remember being in the in the tent with like my my best friend growing up. She was very cultured, and she just brought out this little tape player. Again, I'm very old, and put in the Les Misérables soundtrack and pressed play, and like. It was like my whole world opened up. I was like, wow. what is the this? The drama kid inside you started vibrating. No, truly, yeah. like, un un like unhatched in that Did moment. Did you break out into dance I, and singing? I, I think, honestly, I cried. Oh, Like, oh, I was yeah. just, like, so, like, what this, I don't know what it is, but it speaks directly to, like, my internal being. And you like weren't on any soul. drugs. No, I, I was I was in middle school. I was not hardcore. Well, I like I, I used to uh, me, dump but. out my beer and like put soda in it and like sip it like I was cool. The um, wine in the can from It's Always Sunny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's um, a classic trick. So yeah, went to school for musical theater. I actually went to high school for musical theater. I got accepted into Interlochen, which was like super great. Um, and then moved to the city, just expecting to like make it on Broadway. Like it's super easy because no one prepares you for the other side of it when well, it's. Yeah. Lots of waiting well, tables and this is this is your chance to prepare the youth. <laughs> so yes. how did New York beat <laughs> it's out, hard, kids. How did New York beat out Hollywood for you? Like you had That's a decision. True. You're like, oh, I go this way, I go that way, I what, what, Honestly, this is the lamest, uh, <laughs> lamest excuse, but I hate driving. And I know like Same. LA is very much based on car culture. And I just, I didn't want to be stuck in a vehicle like half my life. Right. Um, and on, there is theater out in LA, but at the time, like I really wanted to focus in on like Broadway and musicals. Right. So that cool. New York was the very place cool. to be. Yeah. Makes sense to me. But what? now I'm like, oh, what if? <laughs> yeah, but you don't you don't want to drive. No. no what what's the thing you wish somebody had told you about this whole scene before you you jumped into it? Was is there anything that you wish you had heard? Yeah, because like I don't know, in school I think we were kind of defined by our vocal type. Mm. So I had like very kind of like a classic um kind of like leading lady voice and I look like this and I pull faces, you know, <laughs> but I don't belt. So it's just kind of I wish someone had like taken me aside and said, like, hey, like know your type a little bit better. Like uh, focus in on like the the things and the the roles that you can potentially be cast in versus like holding on to the idea that you're going to be like you the next Marin Maisie. Right, <laughs> you, you know? can do it all. Yeah. You know, I... I you got to do something first. It's, yes, it's, exactly. It's awesome because, I mean, I hear the same thing on my end in regards to my art. Like I do a lot of different things and many times I'd be like, if you just focus on this. Yeah. I'm like, but that's not me. Yeah. yeah, that's not why I do what I do. I actually do it because I I do have so many ideas and I do enjoy jumping from one thing to another, and that's what keeps me going as an artist. You know. Yeah. I was um actually in drama. Ooh. I was, and I was in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, <gasps> and I played Danny DeVito's character Martini. Nice. Awesome. And it was Martini. it was an awesome. I bet you movie. killed. Hit me. <laughs> Hit me. Remember when he's playing cars? Yep. Yeah, yeah, and they're yeah. like Martini, you're over, you're busted. He's like, Hit me. Casual right. observation, right you look like you would play crazy well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I do I mean, that, that in real life. Way. He ain't playing, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. <laughs> Tight casting. Real. He's crazy for yeah, real. You were also in, uh, you had a little part in Strangers with Candy, right? Oh, I did. Cool. I did. Oh, fun. One yes. of my favorite TV uh, shows. We were lucky enough to get my cousin, Matt Lappin, on here. He was one of the writers for Strangers with Candy. He started as a script editor. Um, they thought he was really funny. Amy and Steven were like, let's hang out and shoot the shit. We love you and... We want to hear your ideas. And then he became a writer. Oh, fuck um, yeah. And now cool. he's the executive producer for Late Show. But Dreams. Um, I played a skinny weirdo always hanging out in the background in Strangers of Candy. That was an amazing experience. I have to say, hanging out with Amy here and there and meeting all those people. Very talented and very, very funny and very nice. Great people. Uh. I had a great time. I was a, a background actor, essentially, on Broad City. Mm, and nice. those girls are so, so wonderful. They're so talented. They're so gracious. I ended up, like, grinding on Alana for one of the scenes. <laughs> like, it was a, um, it's a scene where she deposits a check. I think it's for, like, two grand. And she acts like she's a millionaire and, like, comes in. They're both, like, like hip-hop goddesses. And <laughs> everyone's just, like, crumping all over this bank. So, yeah, it's so great when it's, like, a, a really great environment. Everybody's talented, but everyone is also like so gracious and wonderful mm. versus someone who's, you know, <laughs> you know that they're famous, if you get what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, That's we, not the story I heard. Yeah. I heard you don't, <laughs> I heard you don't want to be, you don't want to see it. Uh, what's that, that saying that says uh, there's two things that you don't want to be seeing, you don't want to see being made. 
uh, sausage and television. Uh, sausage and television. Well, yeah. I guess the hot dogs and sausage. I mean, it yeah. is a grind. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. How many auditions do you go out in a month, you think? So it's different now because of the pandemic. Everyone mm. kind of switched to like virtual auditions. So you get a lot more requests for self-tapes. Yes. Um, but I did a self-tape this week. So that's that's good. Uh, and it's, it is. It's just like the discipline to sit down, get your ass in a chair, and just like go through all of the Actors Access ads, all of the um, casting network yeah. stuff. And big, just... big with Mandy dot com. Self-tape. Yeah. <laughs> does that exist anymore? Because that I, used to be a thing. Yeah. No, thing. It, I'm pretty sure it does. What? Let me ask you, what's the role that got away? from you the, the one that oh, you really god damn that it just like rocked your world like that was mine oh it happened so recently i'm just gonna open a vein and bleed for a second sorry oh, this is why we put you on <laughs> we want to know True. was it star wars no it was not it was honestly it was an indie film it was shooting out in montana it was kind of like a, a psychological thriller drama mm. And the the role that I wanted to play was is like kind of like the lead. Um, so there was the the psychotic killer character, and then like the the hapless like love interest, which would have been me. Mm. And she was an awkward horse girl. Nice. And if there was anyone suited to be an awkward horse girl more than me, like I don't <laughs> believe it. Like, I Are there any like non awkward horse girls? I guess um, that's just the ones winning the championship. A little Fifi. I read every <laughs> single iteration of the Saddle Club. Like I go. was so ready for this role. They had me do like a thousand different takes and auditions and I sent in all their stuff and it literally became, it came down between me and one girl. Oh, dang. And they wanted to take it to Sundance so they went with a name. Oh, that sucks. I know that feeling though. Especially, you know, as a curator and artist stuff. Were you excited by the horse store next door? I did see the uh, the saddle company, right? Yeah, our studio is located right next to Manhattan Saddlery, the only saddlery and equestrian supply shop that's still around in Manhattan. Of course, no one's ever in there. No. I go in yeah. there just to sniff the leather. I yeah, was just going like, to say. They're like, sir, they this is out. the third time this week, <laughs> Mr. Lapp, and we even know your name. Get, get, Please, you're scaring the customers. Get out of here. No, I get it. Back so when I was a poor bartender, I would make like a weekly pilgrimage down to Soho to go to All Saints mm. and just like, not even joking, just like pet the leather. Uh, they, like their jackets are so buttery. Yeah, no, they had. I, I had a pair of All Saints shoes once and they were like, Oh my God, forget it. And then I had a few of their shirts, but they have some badass shirts. Yeah. Mm. And um, I lost one of them. And it you was. You and losing really shirts. Sad. I know, <laughs> me and losing shirts. It really hurts myself. I, I, I just, I, I'm so depressed about this recent shirt, which is my Big Lebowski Dude of the Year shirt. Oh, somebody and, get um, Morgan another Big Lebowski Dude of the Year it shirt. It really, well, it was my papa's. Oh, yeah. Oh. It belonged to my papa. You misplace everything except your collage cuts. Papa's angry. That, no, <laughs> that's no, I have, no, that's not true shit. either. No, you I'll lose I'll tell you a quick too? story. So, you know, there are things that you don't realize until you're doing it in life, obviously. And as a collage artist, there are a few things that I learned that you can't do. Like if you have a bunch of clips out, you can't open a window on a windy day. That's true. Why? Things happen because they go. Whoo. But anyways, long story short, I was looking for this air balloon. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, cut out of an air balloon from a National Geographic. And I lost my mind. I needed that fucking balloon. And I have folders and books. And it took me two weeks. I went through almost absolutely everything, everything, because I'm like, I'm going to find it. Just for the, and I'm OCD. I'm like, I'm going to find this. Right. I look behind my baseboards, the heating boards in my room. I looked fucking everywhere. And then all of a sudden I heard, I swear to you, this is the truth. A little voice in my head is like, check your boots. I was like, what? Your boats. So the voice in my head, I said, yeah. excuse me? Who the and fuck are you? Me, Sir? Sir? <laughs> You're in my fucking head. And do you pay rent? Yeah. Um, and he said again, check your boots. I swear to you, I fucking reached into my boot. And, and he it pulled it out. In my fucking boot. The mm. air Divine balloon. intervention. And here's the thing. In between that time of me not being able to find it, I was able to figure out exactly what National Geographic that balloon came from, and I ordered like three of those fucking no. <laughs> Now you'll never run <laughs> out balloons, balloons for days. You're lousy with balloons. Well, being, being a horse girl is an awesome nerdy thing, and yes. we have another awesome nerdy thing in common. Uh, a little bit of uh, D20 oh, action. D20 action. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you want to get on the show, that's the easiest way to my heart. Yeah. Just yeah. let's talk about Dungeons and Dragons for a minute. Let's get nerdy. Yeah, let's get nerdy. Yeah, what are you actually, up to with it? I'm just going to do a shout out. We do yeah. have a fan under the name Dungeons and Daddies. That's right. Oh, yeah. The you know podcast? Them? Now, I, I just recently found out about that. Yeah. That, it was that a there podcast. is a podcast. No, but there's someone under the name. I don't know if they are 
part of that. But are you an imposter or are you the yeah. podcast? <laughs> Is it like D U N G U N D A D I? Right, spells. I'll have funny. to talk to them. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to figure it out if we got an imposter or not. When did you start playing Dungeons um, and Dragons? So I got into it in middle school. Yeah. Um, my my friends were all in the gifted program. Are you allowed to tell us the year? That's okay. <laughs> I honestly I don't remember. You don't remember. Yeah, I, I'm bad at math, ironically. Don't don't make me count my rolls. <laughs> um, but like all my friends would come out and say, like, oh, we played this these great games today and, and gifted. So one of them was D D. So I was like mm. so jealous. I was like, I'm gonna learn this game. Um, and then it kind of fell off as I got interested in other things. And then the pandemic hit. Mm. And I was like, well, what just takes hours upon hours to consume? D&D campaigns. Oh, yes. So I uh, low-key fell in love with Brendan Lee Mulligan from Dimension 20. Shout out. There you go. Um, and started just going through all of Fantasy High, uh, all of, um, uh, oh, gosh, Sleep Unsleeping City is another great one. Uh, j- honestly, just check out everything the that standards. they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, Matt. Mercer is also brilliant, right. getting into Critical Role and the Nad Pod, and then it literally it was just like a snowball. I feel like Critical Role really blew up the spot too. Yeah, like, uh, there was no it was one doing it like that. Their Kickstarter really was like what to me was like, oh, D and D's back, baby. Yeah, true. Because they were like, we want a hundred thousand dollars to animate an episode, and then they like woke up to like four million dollars, like over funded Holy the hell out of it. Wow, yeah, which is great. So there's a lot of demand for it. I love it because it's a very creative game. So you know, creative. you get to be. Even if you're not the dungeon master, you're really encouraged to like, you know, make a lot of lore about your character, yeah. do a voice, kind of act it out. I'm not a big actor. His character but I do was love a, a hermit with amnesia. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was lazy. It was my first time playing, and I didn't want to uh, do a create backstory. a whole backstory. I know. Yeah. I thought it was a genius. So I was move. like, I'm a hermit yeah. in the foot. I have amnesia, and then I, mm. that allowed the DM to like write in my whole like, you know, give me a surprise like, identity at the what end. What a gift! It like to great. kind of like get hooks in. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Are you doing like D and D related projects? Um. So the the podcast that we started during the pandemic, uh, mm. Cast Eye Podcast, is still going. So nice. check them out. I'm on the first two seasons, I think. Nice. Um. And then yeah, I just have some regular campaigns that I'm still involved in. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty local and low key for now, but I, I honestly, I would never want to get to a point where it's a job and that <laughs> I didn't enjoy it. Oops. I did so. that with art. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucked myself up right Oopsies. there. Uh, did, what about, um, the the twenty sided tavern show. Yes, have you seen that? I have. So um, a lot of my friends, uh, shout out to Nate Betancourt, are in the Drunk Shakespeare crew. Okay, and that was kind of like a spinoff. Oh, um, nice. I auditioned for it and I got a call back, but I was in L A at the time, so Ooh. I couldn't. I no couldn't wonder go. you hate L A. Oh, exactly. <laughs> it just I, keeps not that on they come and get you. L A. will bite ass. you in the ass. I can't believe it's taking me this long to ask. A big question, of course. What what do you play? What's your character? Oh. class and. Okay, so anyone who knows me is like laughing right now. Uh, Hot elf, androgynous, so many daggers, an unnecessarily uh, amount of daggers strapped to their body, <laughs> um, and either a rogue or a ranger. Rogue and ranger. Yeah. I'm ranger all day because I actually shoot archery in real life. Yes. So I'm a big archery nerd, so of course I'm going to have to take ranger. I can't, 100%. I can't do anything else. But then I'm aggressive and I forget and I play them like fighters and kill them. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. I had, uh, my characters where I had it like just like a normal human uh, warrior because he, I liked Aragon. Early mm. on. And then I had a halfling. Like Aragorn? Aragorn. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> um, actually. Nerd fail. Nerd fail. The worst. Yeah, I can't even pronounce oh. it. I have a Lord of the Rings tattoo. If I didn't correct you, uh, <laughs> it's my, Ju- my pedantic it's my, people in the audience would be like, It's my New York um, accent. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's Aragorn. A- Aragorn. He's swinging his fucking sword to and fro, scaring all the beasts. <laughs> anyway, Do you have any exciting projects coming up right now? Or what are you working on next? What's next for you? Yeah. Um, so I I was telling you earlier, I just uh, recorded um, uh, an audio drama that hopefully Ooh. will get mm. greenlit to be actually shot. Um, it's a really cool concept uh, called Time Ghost. So look out for that. If I not know. as a film, definitely as a, a an audio piece. Do you get vocal work, voice work? Yeah, I do. do. I do. Awesome. I do VO. I love it. I, oh, my God. If I could get on a, a cartoon or... Or a right. uh, video game, like I could die happy in this yeah. moment. No, I feel the same way. So, oh. so yeah, but the, I get little things here and there. It's one of the few podcasts I actually listen to. And I don't know how I started listening to them, but Trash Taste. There's like I've three or four voice actors who are like all British born and living in Japan. <laughs> and they all are like anime <laughs> voice actors. And the show is originally supposed to be about like their trash taste in anime and about anime and about voice acting. And 
it, it just it's not that. Oh, you know, <laughs> they just hang best out intentions. and it's like they just do whatever and then they talk about whatever's going on. They have like beer tastings, but they do big live shows and everything too. They're really popular. Oh, that's awesome. It seems like a really fun world. Yeah. You know? I've Ooh, thought about it. I, I just remembered something. So yeah. um there's a show called Windfall that we did the first season of. It's kind of like Ooh. a sci-fi dystopian um uh cool take on like what if aliens were like the dominant race Mm -hmm. um and we are hot into season two after a pretty long hiatus so if you want to check out season one in the hopes that season two will be released shortly uh they are great and everything that rogue dialogue puts out all of their podcasts are like top notch rogue dialogue yeah you know it's it's interesting and i don't know why i never thought about this Hmm. could be a stupid question yeah no aliens D D. A fantasy world, not a sci-fi world. Honestly, they now, uh, not to not to. What would they be like? Tout Blaine Bren- like- Mulligan again, but they did a whole sci-fi. Uh, his mom is a sci-fi writer, so they mm-hmm. did like an homage to her. I think it's called Starstruck. Um, but y- honestly, now you don't have to go by the five E because e-books. of the, mul- the yeah. multiverse yeah. changed everything in comics, right? So now everything is nothing, and nothing is everything, and you could be Bilbo Baggins <laughs> in the future. You could, <laughs> like, robot. as long as everyone no, wants to tell that story. Yeah, there's no, there's no like Which is hard really line. R two D two, right? Right. Yeah, that's beep like beep a beep. future Bilbo. That's true. Mm. I can get behind that. Can you give us a preview of your audio, uh, ex- uh, your audio book coming out? Your audio thing. Oh yeah. So I'm, um, I'm kind of like a, a corporate lady. I'm a badass boss bitch, and I've also slept with my client, which is kind of like not kosher, but here we are. So she's <laughs> like, yeah, it's very high class, very huh, huh, high toity. You know, that that's her voice. <laughs> there you go. Nice. I like it. I like it. It reminds me of a character from a game. I can't remember who at the moment though. Do you game as well? Besides Dungeons and Dragons, do you play any video games? Oh, video games, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I'm I'm more like the indie titles, so like uh, like stuff like Super Meat Boy, Hollow Knight. Did you just say Super Meat Boy? Yeah, yeah you don't know Super what Meat the Boy. Hell is Super Meat it Boy? It is platform it's a platformer. Hell. Yeah, it's super super fun. Super Meat Boy. Yeah, it's, it's right up your alley. That's why he's. That's why his brain. Wow. His okay. gears are turning right now because he's yeah. like, I didn't think of Super Meat Boy. You know, I used to think <laughs> that, that the word like meat me. was so fun. Now you got Papa Meat, you got Meat Boy, you got all these meaty things. There's Remember, a lot of meaty things. There was a oh man, something meaty show on um, Mr. Meaty. On Nickelodeon. Do you remember Mr. Meaty? No. The two puppets, like the strangest looking puppets like I've ever seen. I'm pretty sure it's called Mr. Meaty. And if you have to look it up. (laughs) Look up Mr. Meaty on Nickelodeon. It will blow your mind. Nice. Mr. Meaty. Mr. Meaty. I think I do like have a vague memory of that. We're going to have to put that up on the green screen. It's awesome. There's going to be Mr. Meaty. This is Meaty's right here. Yeah, this is Meaty Maybe you remember. That's so funny. Uh, what do you think the hardest thing about being an actress or actor in in the city is besides the the constant rejection? Besides that, yeah, I, mean, um, I think we covered that a little bit. Yeah, honestly, uh, conversely, getting what you want. Yeah, because I think like you know, then you you have that huge responsibility to yourself and all that pressure. So like you know, you 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 think of like oh Broadway stardom like for your entire life, and then mm. you get the chance to do it. You're like, what if I fuck up? <laughs> you know, like, What's the best thing you've seen on Broadway? The Oh, okay. It's actually not a musical. Um, the best thing I've ever seen in terms of live theater across the board is The Pillow Man by Martin McDonough. It mm. was, I saw uh, the original cast. It was bone chilling. And I'm not necessarily mm. like a, a horror girly, but like oh. the way that that story unfurled and the way that the the set and the lighting and everything was used to create an atmosphere was like mind blowingly brilliant. Mm. So what was the synopsis? Like what's the plot about? Um, uh, uh, the two guys get t- cont- uh, detained for like just this, uh, the string of like horrific child murders. Oh, um, and then it goes Some through, Albert Fish. yes, it goes through like the interrogation process. Yeah. Albert Fish is one of the worst. Yeah. Uh, I always, that's who I could pull out of my pants to, to outdo anybody that, that, Starts talking about murderers. I'm like, but what about Albert, Albert Fish? Fish? He's got you've got Albert Fish in your pants. He lives there. Well, he, he was in Brooklyn, you know. That means he had something for that, in common. No? Yeah. I have an Albert Fish in my pants. He crawled in there. He crawled in there. He, I, he lives there now. Is he the one who put the um, urethra? He would stick the rose stems with the spikes. He had other on people do it. Urethra. Well, oh. basically, what I yeah. heard was when he they put him to death, they yes. put him in the electric chair, but he wouldn't die right away because I think he had inserted so many metal rods into so his. Nails. body 
Yeah, if somebody nails it in his bladder, it didn't react, like fucking it up. Like, yeah, something weird happened. Preemptively or like just in no, general? No, I think that was part life. of one of his fetishes. It was a happy coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that worked out. Um, I'm just gonna Someday throw this, this is going to be of use. I'm yeah. going to throw this at you guys quickly. There are yes. a few weird days, oh, national nice. holidays. <gasps> Let's what do it. What holidays are they? I will go quickly because we only have so much time, but it's yeah. National Corn on the Cob Day. Love it. I like, I like corn. corn. I like corn. I like Same going out as it goes in. It's very National fascinating. National Call Your Doctor Day. <laughs> call your doctor. Oh, I've been doing that recently. We're not going to uh. talk about that, but I have a <laughs> surgery coming up. Oh, yeah, boy. but that reminds me of National Forklift Safety Day. Forklift Safety Day. Don't Lift fall asleep. Lift those forks with care. I yeah. love the meme that's that's taken hold of forklift operators. Have you know about no. this? No. Oh. I guess it's just like Weird Book. I, I think I'm on Weird Book. <laughs> Do you know what Weird Book is? No. The Facebook group a loose group of people who are, I guess, just weird. But they were like, Sign me up. they're really like specific people. Like I have most of my Facebook friends right now in the like Midwest somewhere, you know, and they're, and they're all linked with this a like, few different alt accounts. And I one day confused people you may know as friend requests. And I was like, what did I post that's so popular? Except, 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 except. <laughs> and I ended up friending like a ton of random people. And then my Facebook V got a way more fun. And yeah. ever, since, uh, ever since then, I'm just getting these weird memes. And one of them is like persistent about forklift operators. Like, I think it comes from those bad T-shirts that are get like chopped up with AI that are like, you know, I'm a forklift operator and I was born in June and I kiss my wife and, you know, my kids those. are awesome and blah, 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 blah. My and favorite color is magenta. Yeah, <laughs> just random shit. And it's like the forklift operator thing has been memed into my brain. So every time I hear forklift operator now, I'm like. It's your day. Your and day. it's their day, we, we, so salute to you, forklift operators. Right. Forklift operators of America, we salute you. Good job. When I used to work in a warehouse, we had a forklift operator who had narcolepsy. Oh. I'll just leave it at down that. safe. Oh, no, it was horrible. <laughs> um, National German Chocolate Cake Day. Yum. Oh, this is a cute one. National Making Life Beautiful Day. Aww. Mm. I think my tooth fell out. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a vodka oh, cranberry. Here's a weird one. <laughs> what? Say hi, day. Hi. 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 I'm glad we had the exact same instinct oh, there. Oh, hey. <laughs> hi. Is, is hey acceptable or is it just a hard it's line just hi? Okay. You're going to like this one. This is pretty wild. What's that? Yarn bombing day. Yarn How does one? bombing Yarn. day. Yarn. Oh. Olek. Do you remember the oh. artist Olek? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they used to crochet like, ah, oh, man, crochet. They had like the croutons. All through. No. <laughs> but they, they would Williamsburg? crochet all over the yeah, place. Yeah. I remember a bike in Soho, and... a specific bike in Soho, I think was them. Or it was like, it was kind of a trend uh, to kind of crochet bomb and just crochet random I objects. I want to say like 2000, what, like 10, seeing, 12 yeah. was like really big. Oh, like all the time on Instagram feed. And now like I, this is the first time I was reminded because I see yarn bombing day, but like I don't see their their existence anymore. I wonder, wonder what's going on. We have to yeah. look into Olek, that. Where you are you? Like maybe you should come on our show and talk about what happened. Come back. Where did you go? They're like I yarn bomb me. Tunnel. Where did you <laughs> go? Wrap me up in your threads. You can tie us up all together. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That'd be cool. Tell them where to follow you. Where can they yeah. find you? Yes. What's your what's up next? It's plug time. Uh, plug time. You can follow me on Instagram at m bats e m b a t z. Um, if you enjoy fitness, you can follow me at Body by Battles. I post uh, regular like little exercises and tips on there. And then on TikTok, I am also at m bats with a z. Very nice. nice. Very Thank nice. you so much for coming Thank on. Thank you for having yeah. me. And a quick plug from our sponsor, Solus Studio, where we are filming today. We do self tapes. If you're an actor and you want to have some help with your self tape, headshots professional too. Headshots, we do headshots. Someone told me headshots. We do yeah. prints. And I love believe. doing self tapes because I will help you read your lines. And I, you know, unless you ask me, I will read them very flat and normal and not put any inflection in them. But oh, if you, you let sound me, like a wizard. If you let me, I'll do that. <laughs> I could be anything you want me yes, to be. Yes, Jessica, I will go to prom <laughs> with you. Well, maybe yes. you want me to talk about you like this. <laughs> So yeah, we no. also we also organ, <laughs> we also offer what we call Morgan reading services, which means you won't be able to keep a straight. You will phrase not you. land that gig you if you want to profoundly fail at your audition. We have an option for you. <laughs> I'll just sit in your place. I'll go and do the acting for you, and you'll always get every role. Just hire me, Morgan Lap, and I'm going to go in there and just get that role for you. Damn, I'm convinced. All right, Hired. Have a lovely weekend, everybody. Doodle. We'll see you Friday.